Shalom Yasharala, Kal Halal Yahweh Bashem Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. I'm King Obadiah, bringing to the elect of Israel the Most High's truth. This lesson is dealing with the role of Israelite women in the Hebrew kingdom. I'm going to be two, speaking to two main groups of Israelite females. The first group, most of this lesson is going to the first group, which is, uh, you know, a, hand, a handful of obedient Israelite women who are, you know, these women are obeying the word of the Most High, to, you know, to the best of their ability. They're, obe they're obeying the word. They're submitting to the Hebrew man. They're submitting uh, to the authority of the Hebrew leaders of Israel. Okay, most of this lesson is going to you. Okay, some of this lesson is going to, you know, so-called, you know, pro-black women, okay, Israelite females, they say they're pro-black, but they're not really pro-black, pro they're opposers, and a part of this lesson is going to them as well. So I'm going to start uh, in, I'm going to start in Proverbs 8, okay, and this, less, this kingdom that's coming, this kingdom of heaven for the Israelite nation that's coming is a patriarchal kingdom for Hebrew men. It's going to be a patriarchal kingdom and it's going to Hebrew men. And the Israelite women, you're going to enjoy the kingdom uh, through the Hebrew man. And that's how you fe Israelite females are going to enjoy the kingdom. Again, it's a patriarchal kingdom. It's going to Israelite men. Okay? It's really the whole nation of Israel is invited, but the rulership of the kingdom is going to Israelite men. Because the Most High is a man. Uh, he's a patriarchal man. Yahweh Shai is a patriarchal man. You got Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. They are both patriarchal Hebrew men. So what you're going to get, what you Israelite women are going to get, is a patriarchal Hebrew kingdom. Ruled by patriarchal Hebrew men. Okay, so let's go to the scriptures and bring it out. Proverbs 8, verse 4. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Okay, this is, this is the Most High uh, calling Israelite men uh, into the truth, into his truth. And the reason he's calling Israelite men into his truth is because this is a patriarchal Hebrew kingdom. And he's going to give rulership of this kingdom to Israelite men. Uh, we're going to rule everything. The, the men of Israel, we're going to rule everything. We're going to rule over... Israelite women, we're going to rule over Gentile women, we're going to rule over the Gentile nations, all the Gentile nations, we're going to rule over everything in the whole earth, we're going to rule everything in and out of the earth. Okay, this is, this is a full-blown patriarchal Hebrew kingdom ruled by Israelite men, and you Israelite women are going to enjoy the kingdom through the Israelite men. You're not going to enjoy this kingdom without us. What that means is this. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is going to set the Hebrew kingdom up to where you Israelite women are only going to enjoy the kingdom through your Israelite man. And, and that's how it's going to be. Proverbs 8 verse 4. This is very plain. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man, Israelite men. Now let's bring it out even further, further in uh, Ezekiel 34.
Ezekiel 34, verse 31. And ye my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men. And I am your power, saith the Almighty Yahweh. Now understand that. The Most High in uh, Ezekiel 34, verse 31, is saying that the flock of his pasture is men. He's saying that the rulership of Israel is going to be men. Now, in the same chapter, in verse 30, you Israelite women are invited to this kingdom. Verse 30. Then shall they know that I, the Almighty, their power, am with, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people. Thus saith the Most High. Okay, so he's talking about the whole nation of Israel. The men, the women, the children, the babies. Okay? All of Israel is invited to this kingdom. But, again, in Ezekiel 34... Verse 31, and ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. The, 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 the rulership of the kingdom of Israel is going to be by Hebrew men. And he says the same thing again in uh, Ezekiel 36. So let's go to Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, verses 37 and 38. Thus saith the Most High, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, in her solemn feast. So, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Almighty. So, in Ezekiel 36, verses 37 and 38, the Most High again is saying that the rulership of Israel is Hebrew men. And this is very plain. So this kingdom that you Israelite women are getting ready to come into, the ones that are obeying his word, this kingdom is going to be ruled by Israelite men. That means you are not going to have the power to tell us what to do anymore, you know, to, to try to tell us what to do, to try to rule us, to try to control us, to try to manipulate us. You ain't going to have that power anymore like you have in this kingdom. The reason you got that power now is because the white man gave it to you. And the reason he gave you that power is to destroy uh, the Israelite nation. Now, let's deal with female heaven. Jeremiah 31. Because you, you Israelite females, right now you're in, you're in female heaven. You're in the, uh, you're in the queen of heaven, female heaven, right now. And I don't, you know, I have to suspect that you know you're in female heaven. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. I don't know. But you're in female heaven right now. The Most High allowed you to have female heaven, so that when this kingdom comes. Uh, you know, you, you ain't, you know, he allowed you, let, let's just get to the, let's just get to the scripture. You're in female heaven right now. Jeremiah 31. Hang on. Jeremiah 31.
Verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Almighty hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Okay, that, that's saying that a, that a woman, you Israelite females, is going to have power over your, over your Israelite men in this wicked kingdom. That's what that is saying. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. A woman shall compass a man. A Israelite woman shall compass an Israelite man. Okay? Have power. Have, you know, you know, to a man, to an Israelite man that allows all this, the woman is going to compass the man. She's going to pretty much rule over him. And this is what the Most High has allowed so that you Israelite women can enjoy yourselves. He, he gave you a chance to enjoy yourselves in this wicked ass kingdom. And this is what the Most High has done. And that's what this verse is, ab is about. He gave you a chance to enjoy yourselves in this wicked kingdom. Because when the Israelite kingdom comes, you, you, you're still going to enjoy yourselves, but you're going to enjoy yourselves through the Hebrew man. You're going to enjoy the kingdom through the Hebrew man. You're going to enjoy the world through the Hebrew through the Hebrew, through the Israelite man. You ain't going to be able to do what you want to do anymore. You ain't going to be able to do what you feel like. You ain't, you ain't going to be able to go out and, uh, you know, roam the planet anymore. You're going to have to stay at home. You're going to have to be homebodies. You ain't going to have the, the power or the authority to tell any Hebrew man what to do. You know, unless it's, un, unless it's you know, a child. And that's it. That's the only, that's the only time the Most High is going to let an Israelite woman tell an Israelite male what to do. Is that, that male is going to be a child. The bottom line is this. Jeremiah 31 verse 22. You females are in, you Israelite women are in female heaven right now. Okay, and what's coming uh, to this Israelite kingdom is a male, okay, an Israelite male heaven. Okay, that's what's coming. So, you, you Israelite females that, that can't adjust to this truth, okay, you, you, when the chariots come, you're going to be stuck down here. If you can't adjust, if you're an Israelite female and you can't adjust to an Israelite man ruling over you, you're going to have problems getting in the chariots. Okay? Again, Jer Jeremiah uh, 31, Jeremiah 31 verse 22, the Most High allows you to have this female heaven so you can enjoy yourselves because when the Israelite kingdom comes, Israelite men is going to be ruling over you. Now let's deal with concubines. We're going to have the Israelite men. This is going to be our heaven. Okay, again, I got to keep saying it so that you females can understand. This is going to be our heaven. This is going to be a, a heaven for Israelite men. And you Israelite women are invited. Uh, but you're going to be, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy the kingdom with an Israelite man ruling over you. A part of this kingdom is the Hebrew man is going to enjoy everything. We're going to enjoy Israelite women. We're going to enjoy uh, Gentile women. We're going to enjoy the whole earth. Okay, we're going to enjoy everything in and out of the earth. We're going to run and rule over everything in and out of the whole earth, including Israelite women, Israelite children, Israelite babies. Israelite, uh, the whole Israelite kingdom, okay, uh, the Gentile nations, Gentile women, everything. The Most High is going to give the Israelite man so much power that it's going to blow your Israelite, fem your, your Israelite female's minds. And that's what's actually coming.
Now we're going to get into this thing dealing with concubines. Because again, we're going to enjoy everything. This is going to be a... I got to keep saying it because we got some hard-headed women out there. This is a... This, this kingdom, this Hebrew kingdom that's coming is for Hebrew men. And we're going to enjoy everything, including the women of the heathen nations. Okay? And that includes those pasty faced sex slaves. So... Let's deal with this lesson on concubines. Isaiah. Isaiah 13 and 12. It's a shame I got to keep repeating all this because, because, you know, we got some really, really hard-headed women out there. And I got to keep saying the same thing over and over and over again because I know how hard-headed these women are. And to you women that's obeying the word, I, you know, we good. You know, the, the Most High, Yahweh Shai, the men of Israel, we're good. But, again, I'm talking to two groups of women. I'm talking to the women that are obeying the word, and I'm also talking to women that, that pretend, Israelite females that are pretending to obey the word, but, but, but not obeying the word. Okay? I'm talking, also talking to pro-black women. So, you know, who, who say they're pro-black, but they're not really pro-black. Pro Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Okay, now we're on the subject of concubines. Why is a man more precious than fine gold, okay? I will make an Israelite man more precious than fine gold. That's, that's the true uh, interpretation of this verse. Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make an Israelite man more precious than fine gold. Okay, the reason the Israelite man is going to be more precious than fine gold is because the heathen men are going to be slaughtered out. You, you Israelite women, you ain't going to be able to deal with heathen men anymore. The Most High is going to put them all to death. 99.9% .9 of all white men on the planet are going to die. They're going to get slaughtered out by Yahweh Shah. So you Israelite women ain't going to be able to enjoy heathen men anymore. You ain't going to be able to lay down with heathen men. Okay, and by the way, in the kingdom, you ain't going to be able to allow to deal with heathen men either. Okay? The Most High allowed you in this kingdom, in this wicked kingdom, in this wicked kingdom, to deal with heathen men. In our Hebrew kingdom, you ain't going to be allowed to deal with heathen men. Okay, as a matter of fact, you Israelite women are going to look down on heathen men. You ain't going to want to deal with them at all. Because the Hebrew men are going to have so much power. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Isaiah 13 and 12. What that means is this, Hebrew women, you are going to have to share your Israelite man, not only with other Israelite women from the other tribes, you're going to have to share your Israelite man with the heathen females too. You're going to have to share your Israelite man with the Edomite white woman. Okay? This, this pasty-faced sex slave. Okay, and, and the females of the other Gentile nations, you're going to have to share your Israelite man with them, with these Gentile females, because the Hebrew men are going to enjoy everything in the earth, okay, in righteousness. And that includes Gentile females. And a lot of our women, a lot of Israelite women are going to die. They're going to stay down here and die because they can't accept this truth. When the chariots come, because they couldn't accept this one truth that the Israelite man is going to enjoy everything in the earth and rule over everything in the earth, including them and the heathen women, and that these and that they're going to have to share the he, their, their, these the Israelite man with the heathen women because they couldn't accept that they're going to stay down here and burn with the devil. A lot of our women are going to die over this one thing. Isaiah 13, 12, I will make a man more, an Israelite man more precious than fine gold. 
your women are going to have to share. You Israelite women are going to have to share your Israelite man. That's what's coming in the kingdom. If you can't hack it, if you can't accept that truth, the Most High is going to reject you. Okay? Yahweh Shah is going to reject you when the chariots come, and you're going to stay down here and suffer and burn with this devil. I'm, I'm giving to you plain and simple. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31. Now, in Jeremiah 31, it's going to explain straight up that you, that you Israelite women are going to have to share. Share your Israelite man with the heathen women. You're going to have to share your Israelite man with the, with the Edomite white woman. Okay? And the women of the other nations. You're going to have to share your Israelite man with Israelite females from the other tribes. Okay? And this is what's coming in the kingdom. And if you can't accept this, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is going to reject you and you're going to stay down here and die. You're going to stay down here and burn. If you can't accept this truth. Okay? So let's go to the scriptures. And, this, and if you speak against this, okay, you're going to stay down here and burn. Now, Jeremiah 31, verse 27. Behold, the days come, saith the Almighty, saith the Most High, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. Okay? So let's break this verse down. This is literally talking about the Israelite man uh, taking on, you know, heathen concubines of all the Gentile nations, and it's also talking about Israelite man dealing with the uh, Edomite white woman as well. So let's break this verse down. If you speak against this, you're speaking against scripture, and you're going to stay down here. The Most High is going to reject you, and you're going to stay down here and burn with this devil. So let's break down Jeremiah 31, verse 27. Behold, the days come, saith, saith, the, saith the Most High, that I will sow Okay, that word sow is talking about impregnate. Okay, that I will sow, that I will impregnate. Okay, the house of Israel is talking about the men of Israel in this case, and the house of Judah. Okay, so the house of Israel, the men of the northern tribes, and, and the house of Judah, the men of the southern tribes, I will sow, okay, I will impregnate. Uh, which means to put seed in. Israelite seed. I will impregnate the house of Judah, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the men of all twelve tribes, with with who? With the seed of man. Okay? That's talking about Gentile females seeded by heathen men. Okay, it's really it's talking about Gentile females of the other nations. I will sow, I will impregnate the house of Israel, okay, and the house of Judah, the men of the, 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 men of the 12 tribes, with the seed of man, with the seed, uh, with, with, with the women, uh, with the women seated by heathen men. Okay, so we're going to deal with heathen women. And with the seed of beast. Okay, now again, the Most High says, I will sow, I will put, I will impregnate, I will put seed in. So when it says, and with the seed of beasts, it ain't talking about animals. Okay, it's talking about the Edomite white woman. Okay, that's what it's talking about. So we're going to have concubines in the kingdom. I will sow, I will, I will, I will impregnate, I will put seed in of the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man, heathen women of the other nations and with the seed of beasts. Okay, the Edomite white woman. That's what this verse is talking about. Uh, it's talking about concubines of the heathen nations. 
Jeremiah 31, verse 27. And I broke it down for you so you could understand. Behold, the days come, saith the Almighty, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man, heathen females, and with the seed of beast, Edomite white woman. Now, if you Israelite women can't handle that truth, the Most High is going to reject you. Okay, he's going to count you a hypocrite. He's going to count you not, a, not with the men of the nation of Israel. And he's going to leave you down here to burn. And I got to say it plainly so there's no misunderstandings. This is in scripture. We're going to deal with, with heathen Gentile, fe, Gentile females, concubines. And you, Israelite women, are going to have to share. Because this is a this kingdom that's coming is a patriarchal Hebrew kingdom for Hebrew men, and you women, you Israelite women are invited, but the Hebrew men is going to rule over everything and everybody. Now let's deal with the scoffers. Deuteronomy 21. Now I just showed you in scripture that we're going to deal with heathen concubines. In Jeremiah 31. So now we're going to deal with the uh, with the scoffers. And these are women that, that say they're pro-black but as soon as the Israelite man talk about we're gonna we're gonna pop Edomite concubines in the Hebrew kingdom, then they then they start calling then they start calling us traitors. Uh, they they start wishing death on the Israelite men. Uh, they they hope the Most High kill the tra traitors and all this crap. This is what these Israelite women are doing. These so-called pro-black women. And a lot of these women, well, actually, all of these women are gonna stay down here and die if they don't repent. Deuteronomy 21. For these so-called pro-black women who are talking, who, who have a problem with Israelite men dealing with heathen concubines and, and the Edomite white woman, for you, for you pro-black women, you say you're pro-black, but when we start talking about dealing with the heathen nations, women of the heathen nations, then you start calling us traitors. No, we're not traitors, because we're going to enjoy both you, Israelite women, and we're going to enjoy the women of the heathen nations, because we're going to be ruling over everything and everybody. So, when you speak against us, when you scoff at us, you're speaking against the scriptures. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 through 14, pretty, well, 10 through, yeah, 10 through 14. <laughs> When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the, and the Most High Power hath delivered them into thine hand, and thou hast taken them captive, and thou seest among the captives a beautiful woman. This is talking about a beautiful Gentile woman. Okay? So let me translate this for, for you Israelite women. And thou seest among the captives a beautiful white woman. Okay? How about that? How about a beautiful East Indian woman? How about a beautiful East... Ethiopian woman. How about a, a beautiful Asian woman? Okay? A beautiful Gentile woman. That's what this is talking about. And thou seest among the captives a beautiful Gentile woman, and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. That word wife is talking about secondary wife, which is uh, translated as concubine. Concubine sex slave. That thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put on the raiment of her put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in, in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month. Okay? She's gonna bewail her father and her mother because she's a virgin. Okay? 
we're supposed to be dealing with virgins. So you Israelite women, you, you so-called pro-black women who are speaking against us, you, you damn sure ain't virgins. Okay? We're supposed to deal with virgins. So, and you're not a virgin. So, you, really, you ain't got nothing to say. You, ain't, you, got, you, you don't even have a right to speak against uh, the leaders and the men of Israel. When, when we start dealing with uh, heathen females as concubines, you, you don't even have a right to speak. Because, number one, you ain't, you ain't even a virgin. And that's why she's bewailing her father and her mother and not her husband. She's a virgin. And bewail her father and mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband. And she shall be, the, be thy wife. Okay, when it says be her husband, it's talking about be her ruler. And she shall be thy wife. Okay, she shall be thy concubine. And it shall be if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will. Okay, so when we take a concubine, if we're not satisfied with that concubine, we can kick that concubine to the curb. That concubine, she actually has to satisfy us and make us happy. Otherwise, we can kick her to the curb. Why? Because she's nothing. She's a lowly heathen slave, and she's expendable. Okay? She either pleases us in the kingdom. These concubines are going to either please us or die. So, to you so-called pro-black women... When you speak against an Israelite man dealing with the women of the heathen nations, you're speaking against scripture. This is, this is Torah. This, this verse, uh, Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 through 14, is in the Torah. This is Hebrew law given by the Most High to the Israelite man. When you speak against that, you're speaking against the scriptures, you're speaking against the Torah, you're speaking against the law, you're speaking against the word of the Most High. And, and, and Yahweh, and Yahweh Shah is going to leave you down here. And you're going to stay down here with this devil and you're going to burn and you're going to suffer and burn with him if you speak against this scripture. Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25 is going to explain why why the Israelite man has the right to take concubines. Leviticus 25, verses 44 through 46. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids, slave men and slave women. Okay, and when that's when that's talking about bondmen and bondmaids, that's talking about property. Okay, we're going to buy and sell heathens. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy. And of their families, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. Okay, so the heathen nations are both our property, in Leviticus 25 and 44, and our possession in Leviticus 25, 45, and 46. They're our possession, the heathen nations. Let's, so let's read verse 46. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. Again, the heathen nations are our possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. Okay, bondmen and bondwomen. Forever. Okay, forever and ever and ever and ever and all eternity. Even when we let, even when we set the, after the heathen nations served their sentence of slavery, and we let them go, we're still going to rule over them. Okay, so they shall be your bondmen, okay, and bondwomen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule over one. We should, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. So we're supposed to the Israelites. Are supposed to treat we're supposed to treat each other differently than we treat the heathen nations the heathen nations are property and possession 
the heathen nations are our slaves. So there's no equality there. Okay, just in this verse alone, just in Leviticus 25 and 46, uh, the Most High is saying, treat the slaves different than you treat each other. The, the, the Most High is saying, treat the Israelites better than you treat the slaves. Okay? So, there's no equality here. Okay? The slaves are expendable. <coughs> so, again, in Leviticus and Deuteronomy 21, we got the right to take concubines. In Leviticus 25, we got that right because the heathen nations are our slaves. If you pro-black women, if you so-called pro-black women speak against it, the Most High is going to leave your ass down here and you're going to burn. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. First Corinthians 11 verse 3 but I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh the bottom line for you females is this the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. That, that means that the men of Israel have to, so we have to submit ourselves to Yahweh Shai to get the kingdom. And the head of the woman is the man. That means you, you Israelite females have to submit to Israelite men to get the kingdom. You have to submit to your man. You have to submit to Israelite leaders to get the Hebrew kingdom. To get up in those chariots you got to submit to our authority, okay? And you have to bow down to our will. I'm, I'm being honest. you got to submit to our authority, and you got to bow down to our will, which means you have to let your own, let, let you have to uh, accept what we want and forget about what you want. A lot of you women can't do that, okay? And that, that, that's why a lot of you are going to stay down here and die. Okay, you pro-black women who say you're pro-black, but as soon as we speak again, as soon as we talk about concubines, you start calling us traitors. This verse is plain. First Corinthians eleven three. The head, the head of every man is Yahweh Shah. The men of Israel, in order to, for us to get in those chariots. We got to submit our will, okay, to Yahweh Shah. And the head of the woman is the man. In order for you Israelite women to get the kingdom, you got to submit to your Israelite man. You got to submit to your Israelite leaders. And the head of Yahweh Shah is, the, is Yahweh. Just as Yahweh Shah submits himself to Yahweh. So, you know, all in all, everybody submits themselves to the Most High. Everybody, everybody has to submit themselves out of the kingdom of Israel, out of, out of the Israelite nations. We got to submit ourselves to the Most High to get in those chariots. The men of Israel, we got to submit ourselves to Yahweh Shai. And you women, you have to submit yourselves to the men of Israel to get in those chariots. Okay, and that's, that's how you women serve Yahweh Shah, by submitting to your Hebrew man. Now, when the men of Israel, when we talk about dealing with Israelite concubines, and you start speaking against us and calling us traitors, and say we're wicked and traitors, and start wishing death on us, okay, you're speaking against scripture. You're breaking, you're breaking 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. You aren't submitting to our authority. 
you aren't submitting, you aren't bowing down to the authority of Hebrew men. And the Most High in Yahweh Shai is going to reject you, okay, for being for being a, a Israelite hypocrite. You're being a hypocrite. Because you you black you, you black and Hispanic and really the black woman really she's she's the biggest uh, perpetrator of this. She goes out there and she you know she blows all kinds of devil rod. Okay, and when 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 the white man doesn't bring her into his world and marry her, she gets angry and she starts becoming a, a pro black female. Okay, so what happens is. Because the white man rejected her, he used her like a piece of meat. Okay, he used her like a little, like a little Israelite sex slave. Okay, he used her up, and when he was finished with her, he threw her out. That's what a white man does. That's what a white man does to does to Israelite women. Okay, he's he's not going to marry her. He's going to use her as a sex slave, and when he's finished, he's going to throw her out. And that's where these pro-black women are coming from. Okay, you pro-black women, really, you're you're former you're former concubines of the white man. You're the white man's slut. You're the white man's skank. You're the white man's sex slave. You're the white man's concubine. And because you bit off one too many. Edomite rod, you bit off one too many, more than you could chew, okay? You found out that the white man was using you like a piece of meat. And you got angry, okay? And you became pro-black, okay? You started speaking against the white man, but when the Israelite man, when it's our turn, when it's our turn, to deal with these Edomite females, then you start calling us traitors, okay? You're a hypocrite, okay? So-called pro-black woman, you're a hypocrite for because you enjoy, you enjoy the so-called heathen men, and now that it's the Israelite men, it's our turn to enjoy the heathen women, you're gonna speak against us and call us traitors? The Most High sees you as a hypocrite, and he's gonna let you stay down here and burn when the chariots come. You're gonna get your big ass, you're gonna get a big ass wake up call when the chariots come, Israelites gets taken up, and your ass is stuck down here. That's gonna be your wake up call, black woman. Okay? And I'm talking to the pro black woman who like to speak against Israelite men who want who, who want to deal with both the Israelite woman and the Gentile woman. We're gonna deal with both. That's what a real Israelite man is gonna do. He ain't going to restrict himself to just Israelite women because of what the woman wants. He's a man. He's going to enjoy everything. Just like you women enjoyed everything in your queen of heaven kingdom. First Timothy. Let's go to First Timothy 2. First Timothy, verse 2. I mean, First Timothy chapter 2. Verses 11 and 12. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses... Hang on, it's a lot. I'm in 2 Timothy. Let's go to 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Okay, when you women, when you Israelite women, when you speak against your Hebrew man, this is the law that you are breaking when you call us traitors, when you hope, when you wish death upon us for dealing with the, 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 the Gentile woman, the Edomite woman, when you wish death upon us, when you call us traitors, when you speak against us, when you tell us we can't deal with heathen women, that we should only deal with Israelite women and no heathen women are allowed. When you say shit like that, this is the law you're breaking. And this is why the Most High is going to leave you down here to die. Okay? 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12. 
Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to you, nor to usurp authority over the man. I suffer an Israelite woman. I suffer not an Israelite woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That's the law you're breaking when you speak against us, and that's why the Most High is going to let you stay down here and die. He's going to, he's going to, he's, he sees you as a hypocrite that slept, that, that, that blue Edomite rod, laid down with the fucking Edomite man, he sees you as a fucking hypocrite. You had your fun with the heathen men, and now it's our turn to have fun with the heathen women, and you're going to speak against us when you, in, when you laid down and enjoyed yourselves with the heathen men, and now you're going to speak against us for doing the same thing? The Most High sees you as a hypocrite. And on top of that, you're breaking Hebrew, you're breaking uh, a Hebrew statute. You're not in subjection, and you're trying to usurp authority over the Israelite man. And you wonder why the Most High is going to leave you down here to burn. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, interpret, I'm going to read this, the, the, the correct interpretation of this verse. And this is to you pro-black women, women, Israelite females, calling yourselves pro-black, but you're not really pro-black, okay? You hate us, okay? That's, that's the truth. You hate us. You say you're pro-black, but you hate us, okay? And you love this damn devil, and you have a, you have a beef with the white woman. Now, this is the correct interpretation. 1 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12. This is the correct interpre interpretation of these two verses. Let the women, let the Israelite woman, okay, and let the heathen woman shut the fuck up and learn in silence with all submission, subjection, and obedience. Okay, and that's 1 Timothy 2 and 11. That's the correct interpretation. 1 Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not an Israelite or Gentile woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the Israelite man, but to shut the fuck up and be in submission, subjection, and obedience and silence. That's the correct interpretation. And y'all ain't obeying. Y'all, you, 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 a lot of you women, a lot of you Israelite women, ain't obeying that. And, and I keep got, I gotta keep saying it. You're being hypocrites when you have laid down with the white man. You have blew many Hebrew. You you have blew blew many devil rod. Okay, and then when it's our turn to enjoy the white woman, you fucking speak against us when you already did the same thing in this wicked ass kingdom at least in our kingdom we're going to do it in righteousness you haven't submitted you haven't you haven't uh, you're, breaking, you're breaking statutes you're not learning the truth with all submission, subjection and obedience and you're trying to usurp your authority over the Israelite man 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12, okay? And, and you're breaking those statutes. And that's why the Most High is going to leave you down here to burn. And I got to say it over and over and over, because you women are really hard-headed. So, <coughs> let's get to what you Israelite women are going to have to do to get salvation. Now, now, I'm talking to the women that are obeying. Okay, the women that are obeying the truth, the women that are obeying the law, the women that are submitting to their Hebrew men, submitting to the men of Israel, submitting to their Hebrew leaders, okay, this is what you're going to have to do to get in the chariot. This is one of, this is really the main thing you're going to have to do. Hebrew men are the saviors. We are your saviors, okay? And 
you women ain't getting up in those chariots for the most part for the most part you women you Israelite women you're not getting up in those chariots without an Israelite man you're not getting up in those chariots without submitting to Hebrew authority of the Israelite man. The, the, the Most High has given authority to Hebrew men, and if you don't submit to that authority, you ain't getting up in those chariots. Obadiah 1. Obadiah is a little hard to find. Because it's only one book. But Obadiah 1, verse 21. And saviors, saviors. Okay, we're talking about lower, lowercase s. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. Okay? So the men of Israel, the, really the prophets, we are the saviors. Okay, and that's talking about a lowercase s. That's talking about the men of Israel. If that was a capital S, that would be talking about the Messiah. But it's a lowercase s, so it's talking about the men of Israel. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. The saviors are the men of Israel. Okay, the, the, the chosen, the elect, those are the saviors. And that's how you women are going to get out of here. The Israelite women are going to get out of here through the saviors of Israel, the, the, the men of Israel. We're your ticket on those chariots. First Timothy 2. Okay, and you got to understand, Israelite women, uh, don't do what the heathen nations do. Don't, don't try to bypass your he, the, the Israelite man to get to the Messiah. Don't try to do that. Now, you can, you can get salvation if you don't have an Israelite man. You can, you can still get salvation if you don't have an Israelite man. But you have to be ready to submit to the authority of an Israelite man if the Most High gives you one. If, you got to be ready to submit. That's, that's how you get salvation if you don't have an Israelite man. 1 Timothy 2. First Timothy 2. Verses 13 through 15. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay? That verse right there in and of itself tells you who the leaders are. The leaders are the men of Israel. Adam was first formed, then Eve. We are the rulers over you Israelite women. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay, and this verse is saying that you women are the weaker sex. Adam wasn't deceived. Eve was the one who was deceived. Okay, and after she was deceived, she brought Adam into it. But Adam, at the beginning, he was not deceived. Eve was deceived. Eve allowed the serpent to deceive her. And then later she brought Adam into it. And when, when that happened, all of Israel fell. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. That's how you Israelite women are going to get saved. You're going to have to give yourselves to us. You're going to have to submit to your Hebrew man, to the, to the righteous Hebrew man. You're going to have to submit to Hebrew authority. You're going to have to submit uh, to the leaders of Israel. You're going to have to submit to us. That's how you get salvation. You submit to your Israelite man. And you submit to patriarchal 
male-dominated Hebrew authority. That's how you Israelite women are going to get salvation. Okay, and that's in uh, 1 Timothy 2, verses 13, 14, and 15. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. The woman is the weaker sex. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved, saved in childbearing. That's how you get salvation. You submit to your Hebrew man. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 verses 22 all the way down to 23 all the way down to 25 Ephesians 5 verses 22 to 25 Wives this is talking to you Israelite women this is also talking to you concubines well you know I'm I'm not teaching the concubines but let's just, just let's, let's just stick with Israel right now Wives you Israelite women Submit yourselves to your own husband. That's plain. Wives, submit. That means bow down to the Hebrew man's, to your Hebrew man's authority. I'm, I'm not going to mince words on this. Wives, Israelite wives, submit yourselves to your own Israelite husbands as unto the Most High. You know, as unto Yahweh Shah. The Most High is telling you Israelite women to submit to your husbands. Okay? And that is how you serve Yahweh Shah. It's right there in the scriptures. Come on. Ephesians 5, verse 22. Wives, Israelite wives, submit. Submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Messiah. In order for you Israelite women to, ser to serve the true Messiah, to, to serve your own Messiah, you got to submit to your own Hebrew man. That's how you serve the Messiah, by submitting to us. For the husband is the head of the wife. We are your rulers. It's right there in the scriptures. Okay, it's not saying the wife is the head of the husband. It's saying the husband, the Israelite man, is the head of the wife, the Israelite woman. That's plain. For the Israelite man, the husband, is, is the head, is the ruler of the wife, of the Israelite woman. Even as Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. Even as Yahweh Shai is the head of Israel. And he, okay, this is talking about the Israelite man now. This is talking about your, your the Israelite man. And he, the Israelite man, is the savior of the body of the Israelite woman's body that's how you get saved that's how you get in those chariots you got to go through us Israelite woman you got to submit to your Hebrew man you got to submit to the leaders of Israel that's how you get in those chariots Therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahweh Shai, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything, in everything. Not some things. Not, not, you know, sometimes, some days you can, you can submit, and other days you're going to do your own thing. That's, to let the wives, so let the wives, the Israelite woman... Be to their own husbands, her Israelite man, in everything. That means you got to give your life, will, mind, and body in full and total submission, subjection, and obedience to your Israelite man. You know, if you have an Israelite man in this truth.
Now, let's deal with verse 25. Let's break that down. Ephesians 6, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Yahweh Shai also loved the church, also loved Israel, and gave himself for it. So, what does that mean? What does that mean, uh, black woman? What does that mean, Israelite woman? What, is that, what does that really mean? Okay, let's break it down. This is what it means. Husbands.